Well done for those of you who had a whirl through this question. Um, I went to a couple of breakout rooms where I found some people who absolutely knew what they were doing, which is great. I didn't encounter anyone yet anyway who had more than one solution um, or one method, uh, more than one method. Can you post in the chat by the way? I'm just curious. Just go ahead and say, yeah, we got two methods or we got three or whatever. Um, did anyone get more than one? Or if not, just write one. Or you can write zero if you like. You're like, oh, I had no way to go. Okay, so Zhao's got a couple, that's good. Did anyone else? I'd love to hear, uh, get a bit of feedback before I show you my, um, I've got, I, I have, like Zhao, I've got two methods that I'm gonna show you. Maybe you got one and a half. <laughs> if, you, if you got one, and then you have like another path, even if you didn't finish it, I gave you a criminally short amount of time, so I'm okay with that. Okay, all right, no problem, well look, um, I'm on the clock, so just before I start this, just so it doesn't get lost at the end of this, can I encourage all of you um, to use these questions? What's really nice about them is a bunch of them have work solutions, um, which is great. They're not always the most easy to interpret. Sometimes I look at them and I'm like, how did you do that step? Um, but you're welcome to ask, and um, we'd like you guys to do that for all the topics and post any questions to us so that we can incorporate them into your revision lessons. Let's have a go, shall we? Prove that for any integer, uh, n is greater than one, the log base n of n plus one is irrational. And they're gonna throw three marks at us for this apparently. And this is just from last year's HSC. Now, the first thing you've got to decide is, uh, unlike the previous question where it's like, oh, it's an inequality, there's algebra, I'm just gonna throw some algebraic manipulation at it, right? In this case, you've gotta be a little more thoughtful before you can even put pen to paper. You have to decide on a way to go about this that's gonna give you a useful path through it. And I'm gonna to suggest to you, and I'm gonna pause for a minute just to give you guys a moment to think about it. Um, I'm gonna to suggest to you that this is a classic example of where proof by contradiction is going to be uh, probably the most easy way to prove this, even though it is so indirect, like the whole point of proving by contradiction is indirect. Now, what is the big clue? Um, I'm just pausing for a minute to give you guys before I go through the proof. Um, an opportunity to recognize if you didn't get this, that this would be helpful, right? What's the clue in the question that sort of suggests to you that proving this by contradiction might be useful? And for me, um, there's just a single word, right? And admittedly, you don't have that many words to choose from. Um, and especially when you're realizing what, like, what makes this question unusual as compared to other questions. Um, it's this final word within the sentence, which is irrational. Right? What does irrational mean? Uh, it means you cannot express this number as a ratio of two integers. That's what it means to be irrational. We have loads of numbers like that. Um, square roots of any numbers that aren't squares. Um, you know, the transcendental numbers like pi and e, those good, those good guys. Um, and, um, you know, a bunch of the logs are irrational, right? So we're gonna try and prove that log base two of three or log base 100 of 101, that they were all irrational, how we can do it. And the answer is, we're gonna try and say that it is rational and then arrive at a contradiction. Because that's much easier to actually say that something is true rather than something is, like the word irrational has a negation within it already, right? And negations can be quite tricky to work with. So here's how we start. A proof by contradiction has to assume that the statement that we're asked to prove is false. We're gonna assume the negation. Um, and you have to be quite careful about how you state this, right? So I'm gonna assume that I can say this log term here as P over Q, classic kind of choice of pronoun rules here. P and Q have to be integers. Uh, and this is important too, if you've never, hopefully you've seen this word, I know I've talked about it a couple of times here and there in some of my videos. Co-prime means it doesn't share any, the P and Q don't share any common factors, right? So they are prime sort of to each other, even if P and Q necess aren't necessarily prime. So 10 and three are co-prime, uh, even though 10 is not prime because 10 and three don't share any factors. All right, so now that I've set that up, um, what am I gonna do with it? Well, what I'm gonna try and find out is a contradiction out of this result. So I just start to manipulate this, right? Um, so this is a log statement and I've just turned it into an exponential one. And then from there, I notice that I can uh, raise both sides, the left and the right, to the power of Q. And I get this statement right here, okay? now. Why is this a useful statement? Remember what I'm trying to do is get to something which doesn't make sense, something which is contradictory. And this is an equation which cannot possibly be true and I just have to prove why it can't be true, right? Remember n is not just any number, it is an integer. 
up here um, and it's an integer greater than one. So what that means is you've got whole numbers going into here and then you're raising them to whole numbers, right? Now, if it's not obvious to you, try some numbers. It's always um, helpful, especially when you've got so much um, algebra, so many pronumerals flying around, to try some numbers, right? So if I said like, what if n was say two, okay? I'd have two to the n, or sorry, two to the p rather, equals, and then on the right hand side, n plus one is gonna be three. And then that's the power of q. Now, hopefully you can see here, like you might know the powers of two, right? Um, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on, right? Because of the way you're building that number, you're never going to have a factor of three. The powers of three are three, nine, 27, 81, uh, I, my, my brain is already 243, we're, we're gonna sort of struggle from there. Um, they're all odd, right? And the powers of two are all even. And if I chose some other um, numbers, like say, you know, if I chose four, then this would be five. You're gonna have the same problem, right? Powers of four, um, 4, 16, 64, 256, and then powers of 5, 5, 25, 125, 625. You're getting all evens on the left-hand side and all odds on the right. And you have to, because if n is even, then n plus 1 is odd. And the reverse is also true. So what I need to do is go from just this, these numerical examples to how do I prove that, um, how do I state it so it's generally true. So here's the way I've laid this out. I've said, let's do this by cases. Um, you might also hear this called proof by exhaustion. We're gonna exhaust every possible uh, way that this could be um, laid out. So if n is odd, you raise it to any integer power and you'll get another odd number, right? But if n is odd, then n plus one is even. We saw that with two and, uh, sorry, I, I actually did the other way around. I started with n being even and go the other way. But if you've got n plus one being even, then once you raise it to an integer power, that's also even, I should say, a positive integer power. Um, and so therefore, I can say, well, I've, I've got a contradiction, right? That the left-hand side is odd, the right-hand side is even, so that's something which can't be true. Um, and then you can reverse that, right? You can say, well, what happens if it's even on the left and then odd on the right? That is also a contradiction. So therefore, um, it's a bit notation heavy, but hopefully you can read this with me n to the power of p cannot possibly be equal to n plus one to the power of q for every value, for all the values of n that are integers. Um, and so since that can't work, right? We've, we've landed on these contradictions. That original assumption which set this all in motion has to be false. Therefore, it's not rational, it's irrational.